All right, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sotko here. Welcome back to the channel. Got a quick news video for you guys here. Celsius has now filed for bankruptcy. Just another one that has, well, essentially crashed in a line of crypto lenders that have filed for bankruptcy uh, this year with the fall of Bitcoin down to 20,000 from 60,000. And I wanted to make this video somewhat quick. Uh, we also had uh, three arrows capital. Uh, those founders remain underground. They just sort of left. Uh, we have Voyager Digital as well. This isn't even all of them. A lot of uh, these crypto lenders have sort of crashed and are now filing for bankruptcy, um, as well as uh, some other ones. And I, I kind of want to talk about uh, a problem that I have seen in cryptocurrency uh, that I kind of tried to call out. And, and, and I got to admit that I didn't really call this out 100%. Um, and I would say that this started probably late, maybe 2019. I would say that this really started in 2020, uh, that this crypto lending slash DeFi started to occur. And I remember when this started to occur, approximately around Compound started to come out. And I, I wanted to talk about how that this is not and never really was sustainable. So first of all, let me let me talk about how uh, and, and why Celsius and these other platforms crashed and how they work. So first of all, uh, these Celsius platforms and various other uh, lending crypto platforms worked in that uh, either A, you would either lend to the platform or you would borrow from the platform. If you were a lender, you would just put crypto on the platform and you would get a interest rate. The interest rates in my opinion, were, were way too high. Uh, and if you're receiving something like 10% or something like that for lending your Bitcoin or USDC or some other uh, crypto or token, well, that means that the people on that are borrowing have to uh, pay an interest rate higher than what the people that are getting for lending. Uh, otherwise, there's no profit in the system. So the people that are borrowing have to pay a greater interest rate than the people that are lending to the platform. Otherwise, the platform doesn't get interest and it doesn't it doesn't quite work that at all if it's if it's mixed up or backwards or anything like that. So they were way too high to begin with. Um, and but anyway, so it, it, it is what it is. Um, and when you actually go to borrow on these platforms, say you want to borrow one Bitcoin, well, you end up having to give them one and a half Bitcoin or maybe 20% more Bitcoin. All the platforms varied. Maybe you would have to give them uh, something. You would have to give them a leverage above what you wanted to get. So they were over, these platforms were over leveraged and that's what they were supposed to be. And that's of course a good idea. Um, so uh, you would have to give them 1.2 Bitcoin to get one Bitcoin. And this works in your favor in a bull market. So let's say I want one Bitcoin, so I have to give the platform 1.2 to 1.5 Bitcoin. And let's say Bitcoin doubles in price. Wow, that's really great for me because the doubling in price in Bitcoin effectively paid off my loan and I just, I effectively just got free Bitcoin in a way. I just got a free loan. This is not unlike how CEOs and such in the modern era make uh, effectively free money and pay no taxes. And I don't mean that they don't work, but they, they don't in, in, in the way they don't pay any taxes. For example, like Mark Zuckerberg, uh, he gets paid in stock. So and then what he does is he leverages that stock in terms of loans. He leverages it against it and he will take out a loan against his stock. And then when his stock actually rises in value, that rise in value pays off the loan and there is no uh, taxation on the debt of his loan. So therefore, the loan is just automatically paid off by the fact that his leverage is now is is now paid off by the by his stock being worth more it's it's actually worth more than the loan he took out uh, because it raised in value or it doubled in value or whatever Facebook or Meta, whatever he calls it now. And that's what a lot of CEOs do. That's why they pay no taxes. And that's why you keep hearing, you know, these CEOs, you know, pay no taxes because they get paid an, an actual dollar and then they get paid in stock and they just actually take out 
a loan against their stock. And when their stock rises, it just automatically pays off their loan. And that's sort of great, okay? Uh, however, uh, unfortunately, uh, so the, these these Celsius platforms are actually over leveraged. The, these 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 uh, crypto lending platforms are over leveraged, and that's a good thing. But when Bitcoin was at sixty thousand, they were over leveraged. However, uh, when it dumped, so if they're over leveraged by one hundred and fifty percent, and Bitcoin dumps to twenty thousand, well, that's a very significant loss. Uh, in the price of Bitcoin. That's a greater than 50% loss in Bitcoin. 50% loss would be at, at, uh, at $30,000. So we're talking uh, you know, upwards of a 75% drop in the price of Bitcoin or so. I'm not doing the math in my head at the moment. I'm just, uh, just rambling here. So that means all of their money that they had that was over leveraged is now literally worth less than the loans that they have out. Even though they were over leveraged by 150 or 200 percent, that money that they had over leveraged is now worth less than the actual outstanding loans they have. They literally don't have the money. Uh, to give these people their loans back. So if everybody requested their loans back, again, a bank run sort of situation, they don't have it. This is not, this is unlike, uh, you know, a cryptocurrency exchange that, you know, uh, if everybody tried to withdraw their cash and they just didn't have the funds, that would be a problem. This is just, this is an over leveraged situation um, and an under leveraged situation. Um, so this is a big problem. Another big problem I see with the DeFi market in general with cryptocurrency is that we're trying to um, uh, replicate the fiat money system. And let me give you an example, uh, an analogy, I suppose, of the fiat money system. The fiat money system sort of works in a nutshell um, that if I were to go to a bank and uh, deposit $1,000, that bank can now, uh, uh, has to hold about 10% of my funds, uh, but it can give the other 90% out as a loan. And it can do that over and over, actually. It actually can do that over and over, 90%, 90%, 90%, 90%, 90%. And in fact, it works out to about uh, nine times the amount of money that I give them, they can actually loan out. And you might think to yourself, that's not possible. Well, it is in the inflationary fiat money system. And it kind of works, right? It's just something that we're doing, right? And uh, I don't know if anybody actually likes it. It's just just the way the world works at the moment. Um, so that's the fiat money system. Um, you know, a better analogy would be like, let's say there's no money in the world at all. We're going to do a total reset. And I am the arbiter of all of the money. I'm the king of the money. And we're going to do the fiat money system again. So there's a big line, everybody. There's a million people in line, and I'm sitting at a desk, and everybody comes up to me, and, and they want $100. So I they, they come up to me, and they give me their reason why. They say, I want a business loan. It's going to be a great business. It's like Trump. They're like, it's going to be a huge business. It's going to be great. Everybody's going to love it, right? So I go, okay, that's a great business deal. So here's $100. But by the end of the year, you're going to owe me $110. Well, that's impossible because there's no money in the world right now, and I just gave you $100. There is no other $10. So that means I'm going to have to print up another $10 eventually to pay that debt. So we'll ignore that for the moment. The next person comes up in line and gives me their business idea and I give them $100 and I say, you're going to owe me $110 by the end of the year. And a million people do that. So I give out $100 to a million people. And so I give out $100 million. But there's $10 million or so in interest owed to me by the end of the year. But that money doesn't exist. So that means that more people are going to have to come up to me for loans sometime during that year and I'm going to have to produce more money and that means that some of those people that I gave loans out to are going to get wrecked. It means I have to produce 
more money out of thin air, poof. But that's not how the crypto market works. That's not how crypto works, is it? So if we're producing interest on Bitcoin and these various coins, even USDC, uh, where is this interest coming from? Where is the money coming from? Well, you could say, well, it's these borrowers and these lenders, but eventually the problem is that the system is gonna collapse because if you keep giving out this interest to people, that means we're gonna have to keep more and more and more people onto the platform uh, in a Ponzi scheme-like manner uh, to continue the interest rate for the people who are lending to the platform because we can't just continue to produce more Bitcoin. You cannot put an interest rate on Bitcoin because it, you could do it for an individual person, say me to you. I could say, I can loan you one Bitcoin and you can give me 1.1 Bitcoin back in a month. That will work between me and you. But on a massive scale, you cannot charge interest rate for Bitcoin because there isn't infinite Bitcoin being produced. There is a finite amount of Bitcoin. Well, you could argue that uh, Celsius or Crow or these various other platforms could produce their own currency and therefore increase their own currency. But that's just going to lower the value of it and eventually the platform is just going to collapse because it's just going to continuously produce this currency in this very small little sphere, um, which cryptocurrency, let's just face it, is still a very small sphere and it's just going to increase it. So in my opinion, I don't think DeFi was ever really meant to, um, uh, to survive in the crypto world, because if we're charging interest rate and producing interest on cryptocurrency, where is the currency coming from? Uh, eventually, you have to ask the question, when is it going to collapse? Uh, because it's it's just it's just magic. Either you're creating your own cryptocurrency to give out to people like Crow, which is just going to bomb in value over and over if you're not buying stadium after stadium and you're just creating hype, which is not creating value. Um, or eventually you're just going to have more and more people to the platform and more and more Bitcoin. But if you exaggerate that and extrapolate that into the most massive platform in the world, eventually you're going to run out of people and it's all going to go to the lenders eventually. And there is no more Bitcoin left to give out. And then the system collapses. Um, unlike the fiat system, where if I lend to a bank, or a bank lends to me, there's always money being produced to give to somebody else, to give to the next person, to charge interest rate on, which does work, at least in a long-term scenario. Uh, and I'm not like praising the fiat money system, not in any way, shape, or form, but it's, it, there, it's apples and oranges. It just doesn't work in crypto with this finite amount of crypto in the, in the sphere. Um, so that's how these 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 uh, these platforms collapsed. Um, once again, you know they 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 over leveraged. You were supposed to give them more Bitcoin, uh, you know, one point five Bitcoin to get a one Bitcoin loan. Fair enough, um, and that works for you in a bull market because if the price of Bitcoin doubles and it did, it you know it tripled, it quadrupled, uh, depending on you know the timeline you look at, um, and that paid off people's loans. That was essentially free loans for a lot of people. Uh, and then when it uh, when it crashed by 50, 60, 70 percent, um, that means that the leverage that these platforms were holding literally dipped below the amount of loans. To put it in the most simplest way, it literally dipped below um, the amount of outstanding loans and they have to file for bankruptcy. They just they simply just cannot give it out anymore. Um, and uh, so I think we have a problem in cryptocurrency. Uh, I think. I, I think we have to have a different system in terms of lending and loaning for people. Um, you know, I, I don't I don't know what that is. I, I, I don't I don't have that solution, but uh, it did not work. And I don't think that interest rates in this manner are going to work with cryptocurrency. And we're going to see a different paradigm coming soon after all these platforms crash and and burn. Uh, we're going to have a lag period in between here. Um, we're going to have the great no DeFi period for a little while. And then something different is going to come along. Um, and when it does, I'll try to evaluate that maybe with a little bit of, of a better mindset. Um, because I remember when Compound came out 
and BAT, um, B-A-T, the crypto, uh, had a 32% interest rate to it. And I thought to myself, for, for lending, and I thought to myself, well, if BAT has a 32% interest rate for lending, and first of all, it was dumping very quickly, so it, it didn't really matter in the long term, but just, just go with me for a second here. If BAT has a 32% interest rate for lending, how much would you be charged interest rate for borrowing? It would have to be greater than 32%. It would have to be like 40 or 50%. And who would ever take any loan for 40 or 50? I don't even think the mafia charges 40 or 50% interest rate. Like even the mafia would be like, hey, that's highway robbery. You know, sorry, I don't have the good... New York accent, but like, you know what I mean? Like even the mafia would be like, uh, you know, like that's, that's crazy talk, you know? So it, it's just, it's absolutely, and I thought it was absolutely ridiculous. And I thought these, these, you know, 10% interest rate, you know, and I also kind of thought to myself too, I'm like, well, I could out day trade 10% interest rate as well. But, you know, and I also thought at the same time, it's good interest rate, but at the same time, you know, if, if you're if you're getting 10% interest rate on USDC, then to take a loan out on USDC, you're also getting wrecked because it's got to be like 12, 15, 20% interest rate. And I can go get a loan from some other uh, platform, some from some actual like fiat uh, platform for far less than that or a 401k loan or something like that, a leveraged loan for far less than that. Um, it just didn't really make sense to me. But now that I see all these platforms crashing, all their leveraged loans crashing, and then now that I think about it, um, there was never a there was never a long term situation where you can charge interest rate for Bitcoin for these various cryptocurrencies because most of them have a finite supply and there's no way to there's no way to produce that that sort of interest rate for everybody so uh i just i personally i think it was it it, it was it's impossible looking back on it it was it was impossible but that's all i have for you guys i hope you enjoyed it uh, tell me what you think uh, in the comments. I, I always read comments. I know uh, every YouTuber says that, but I actually read all my comments, and um, most of the time I reply to them. But um, next time, I'll see you guys.